Hello my friends and welcome, my name is Dennis, today we're gonna speak about the Emirates Airlines and my attempt to join that airline on the pilot's position. As you probably know, I used to be the airline pilot for the long 13 years, I used to fly ATRs together with Boeing 737, my last airline was the Ukraine International Airlines in Ukraine and after the war had started, I finished my pilot career. Not finished, I might say, but stopped temporary because I now have the activity on YouTube, not on this channel mainly, but on other one. The most of my flying I've done in Ukraine, but there were two years that I was flying for Garuda Indonesia Airlines, probably you understand where it was, yes, in Indonesia, and Garuda Indonesia is the major airline over there. I signed a contract with Garuda for two of the years, and Garuda didn't want to renew it for the expert pilots. It was back in 2016 Then I started to search for the other job because I didn't want to stay unemployed without any flights. The Emirates seemed to be the good option for me, by that time they lowered the requirement and they were hiring the people with turboprop experience. That year I still hadn't had any experience flying jets. The first step, as usual, is to apply for the airline. In our modern day world, we do it through the internet. And Emirates has the dedicated page for the flight careers, for the cabin crew careers, so I went there and filled the form. The application that you need to fill is quite long, so be prepared to use your documents, logbook and all of your experience to be listed in that application. After you applied with your application on the website and sent it, you need to wait for a known period of time. For me personally, I think I waited for one month, but this period of waiting could take several months. And some people even do not have a response. What kind of the response do you usually have? Well, email response or the personal call. In my case, it was the direct call from the Emirates. They spoke with me about my experience, the airline I was flying, do I know anything about the Emirates Airlines, something like that. Later on, at the end of our conversation, they told me that it was the English check. They need to understand whether I understand them. They're not just looking for a pilot, but for people who understand what we are talking about about and able to communicate. For pilots, usually you need to have the level 4 IKEA of your English proficiency, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you understand everything and you are so fluent to work in different foreign environment. Emirates pay for your trip, for your accommodation, they pay the salary for the instructors who will check you on your screening to the airlines, so they need to make sure that if you go there, they will not just waste your ticket to business class whatsoever. After the conversation, let's say, with a human resource manager or maybe even English teacher, I'm out of clue whom I was talking about and I forgot the name of that lady, I was given a few of the options to come to Dubai for interview. By that time it was quite a long process in Emirates, later on it was reformed, so half of the interview you actually do online, recording the videos as I do right now. And basically you go to Dubai just for the final stage, but I had to spend at least four of the days in Dubai for the full-scale interview. So I choose some of the dates, I put my days off in Garuda Airlines for the particular dates, luckily I was able to do it, and I took the business flight from Jakarta to Dubai, quite a comfortable Boeing 777. Nevertheless, I like the business class in Garuda Indonesia Boeing 777 more compared to Emirates, because of the composition of the business class, basically you have less seats in Garuda compared to Emirates, that is why you have more space. Anyways, I arrived to the hotel where Emirates booked a place for me, not just me, but many of the pilots. The hotel was crowded with Fly Dubai and Emirates applicants. The people from all around the world, Brazil, Turkey, United States of America, Canada, Indonesia. The interesting thing is that I met one guy from Australia who was with me on Fly Dubai interview three years before. 
and we successfully failed it. <laughs> Before flying to Dubai, you also received the briefing, including what you need to wear on the interview, so you need to wear the business suit. I went to the local shop and bought the business suit especially for this event. It was quite hot in Dubai by that time, walking in the business suit, but what could I do? You know, it's a dress code and you need to follow it. You don't need to buy expensive Armani or Gucci suit, just a normal casual one. You need to look pretty and representative if you have the beard as I do have right now. It's better to cut it off or make sure it's well groomed, but if you have interview for four days, it's better just to cut it to maintain it throughout all the process. Because I spend like one hour a day by just ironing my suit and cleaning my stuff. Pay a lot of attention on how you look because people perceive you as you look as well. So at the first day we went to the Emirates headquarters, quite a large building, and we had one more briefing over there. The young lady gave us some information about our screening process, and after her briefing we conducted this partial reasoning test. Basically you have the piece of paper with many tasks, visual tasks, many forms like crosses, triangles, whatever, and you need to connect them, guess the next step basically, and that is what I did over there. I did not all of the tasks, there were 40, I did I think 31, from which later on I understood that the 23 were totally correct. But one guy did 40 out of 40 and all of those were correct, I don't know how he did it, probably he prepared for the interview. Well, actually Actually, the most of the pilots were prepared for the interview. I also bought the special course on the flight jobs career or something on the website. It costs just $100, but definitely it gives you the opportunity to join the interview before the interview. There you conduct the similar tasks and you understand what is happening next. But definitely it only prepares you partially because the tasks were different on a real interview, but the idea is the same, so definitely you may prepare. Right after we completed the tests with partial reasoning, I think it calls like that in English, we went to the computer room for the aptitude test. It's the personality test based on the reaction to understand whether you're capable to maintain the workload, the heavy workload. So at the same time you heard the numbers, like for example flying the airplane with a joystick, and you heard the numbers, the sequence, for example 226, 228, and then you heard 2231, so the sequence changed from the ratio 2 to the ratio 3, and there you push the button, something like that. Actually, I don't really remember what was there, but it is very close to my experience. Also, after that task, you receive the different information, for example, from ATC, you memorize it and you put the data on your PC, right on the screen. After that, you receive the visual information on the screen, for example, altitude 2000 feet, speed 280 knots, and heading 090. You memorize it and you need to put it manually also after it vanished. Later on, there were some basic math tasks, not hard, but you need to think about it and get prepared. And later on, there were some ATPL questions, also very basic. After the computer room, we were divided into several groups to go on different flight simulators. Emirates has Boeing 777, Boeing 737, probably they rented from the flight Dubai. Also, they have the old Airbus 330 simulator. I was lucky to go for Airbus. And all of that was happening at the same day. The most interesting part from all of my experience on Emirates is flying the real flight simulator of Airbus 330. It was really fun. My instructor was the local pilot who used to fly the real airplane before as the first officer. Yes, he is Arab, he is from United Arab Emirates, but something went wrong with his house, so he is unable to continue his 
flight career, but he became the instructor over there, recruiting and testing pilots on a flight simulator. When I first saw him, I was kind of surprised because he was wearing the national dress, but later on I understood that it's totally normal in Emirates. He was young and very friendly. Speaking with him, you feel like you speak with your good old friend. There was one more flight instructor in a flight simulator, this time the real instructor who was the TRI or TRE. In my case it was the guy from Brazil, they were also chatting between each other and I was sitting at the captain's seat. Actually you are up to choose your seat, but I chose the captain's seat because by that time I was flying as the airline captain on ATR. I forgot to mention that before going for the flight simulator you also have the short briefing with other instructor, but on the simulator itself you obtain one more briefing, so they say to you that you need basically to fly your airplane you are type rated on, with all of your personal callouts, and they will do the rest of the job dedicated to this particular airplane type, for example Airbus 330. They just want to see your reaction on flight, whether you are capable to maintain the pitch, the heading, the bank and uh, other stuff. Every airplane in the world flies according to the same principle. And in Airbus case it's not the difference. Yes, it's fly by wire, but it's still the airplane under the same laws. So we started the flight, we took off and I was flying the airplane. Later on they switched off the flight directors, the cross that shows you the direction where you need to fly the airplane and they call me some of the commands to fly the particular vertical speed, accelerate the airspeed, change the altitude, I did everything fine. Later on we did some banks and at some certain point they stopped the flight simulator, they froze it. And they came out to me saying, ok, you are in a situation when you lose the communication with air traffic control. What are your next actions? And you have the chart. By looking at it and knowing the rules, you need to show how would you fly back to the airfield or whether you want to continue to your destination with that case and how you gonna enter the profile, how would you descend, how would you approach and what actions would you do, just briefly. Also don't forget the CRM because he is instructor on the right, but he is still your first officer and the instructor on the back may act as your flight attendant or your purser. After that they unfreeze the simulator for some time and we made one more approach with flight directors off. Then first officer slash instructor told me to go around, we did the go around and they froze the simulator again. They say to me that now we're gonna have the engine failure, you need to do everything as in your airplane. In that case for me it was ATR, but if we speak about technology, ATR, especially 600, is very similar to Airbus and all of the callouts are similar. So then they released the flight simulator, we did everything almost perfectly with standard Airbus phraseology, especially in PFD display, then you have all of this autopilot green lights, localizer blue lights and other stuff. With one engine we prepared the airplane for approach and landing and there was the landing with flight directors on, so it was quite simple, I did very nice and the simulator finished for me. I exited the box, the room and I was waiting for 5 minutes for my instructor. My instructor, so my first officer, the local one, called me and said that Dennis, you passed the first day. I said, wow, thank you so much. He said that the simulator was quite good and I need to concentrate on the psychometric test that was going to be the next day. I asked him about my math tests and aptitude and other stuff. He said, no worries. The simulator was done correctly, you passed the first day. The second day was different and at the same time more relaxed. First of all you go to the computer room, to the same one and you need to look through 1100 questions concerning your psychometric profile. Have you ever got the thoughts of suicide? So the questions are very simple, we all understand what to answer on all of them, but at the same time you need to be honest with them because they understand if you want to cheat. Because after it they asked some of the pilots to pass the test once again because they answered 
for the similar questions differently. The test takes lots of the time. If you don't know some of the terms in English, you are free to use the dictionary. That is what I did over there. Moreover, there was one Canadian guy who also used the English dictionary because he didn't understand some of the words. Right after the test, you don't have your results immediately, but you go on a short trip around Dubai. They show you the accommodation, the local villas or the apartments and also the schools. If you have the kids, you take villa. From one side it is good, but from the other one it's not really nice, because if you have some issues with that villa, it's really hard to change it. I spoke with some of the Emirates pilots and for them, at least before by that time, it was a big headache to change the apartments. You have also the option to have the money and find the apartments on your own. The place where flight and cabin crew live is not in a city center, you are a little bit separate from it. So it might take you some time to go to the airport, especially in the rush hour. Nevertheless, you have the private transfer with the driver to the airport. Actually, we had the same in Garuda. So the apartments and the villas are more or less okay if you don't have the mold in the air condition system. That could be the problem. Later on, there were the schools, more or less simple. We visited two of them. The one school was kind of great, but for that you need to pay extra. Emirates by that time paid, I think, 40,000 dirhams for the school per each child. If you want something better, you need to pay on your own extra. Also, you have some kind of the credits for the car, but again, for the small car, if you want the good car, you need also to pay extra. Before that visit, I have never been in Dubai and it was really hot, hotter than in Indonesia. I didn't expect it. And during the summertime, oh my god, my friends, the humidity is so high and it is so hot that you just cannot live without the air conditioning you'll be literally dead without it. So the climate is not really good out there, especially during the summertime. During the winter time it's more or less okay, but still you have the small particles of the dust in the air and I can feel it personally. After being three days or four days over there, I felt some irritation in my throat and in my nose from those particles and I think I am quite sensitive about it. Also, the oxygen saturation is a little lower than usual, because there is the desert around, yes, you have the oxygen, enough for breathing, but you feel that something is unusual happening to your body. So you need to adjust, I think, after spending one or two months, you'll be okay with that climate. But during the summertime, you'll never be okay. And there's one more question about the kids' activity. So here in Europe, our kids may just go and play on a yard in Emirates, it's basically impossible. The activity turns into the close environment, malls, some of the shopping centers, that's it. There is nothing more you can do over there. Well, during the winter time you can go outside, but summer, again, I'm speaking about it, it's basically impossible. So it is very often that families spend the time in Dubai during the winter time and for the hot season they go somewhere to Europe or to the United States, whatever. Okay, I'm a little deviating from the topic, so the next day. There you are again divided by groups and you need to perform the special group tasks. In my group, the task was to transfer some of the treasures from one sultan to the other one and you basically have the cards which you should hide from the others, the pieces of information that you obtain. And you need to come out with the idea of how to transfer basically the treasure, how to solve this task. In my group there were just three persons, one guy from Turkey, one captain of Malaysian Airlines and me. I was responsible for the timing, but what I did to not be deflected by the time, I just put the alarm clock and the big timer on my iPad I put just on the table, so it solved all of the problem with timing. So I might concentrate on the task. And honestly, I wasn't really active in the conversation. I listened more than spoke. And then they came out with some terrible numbers, so let's say 40,000 kilometers. 
I say that it's nonsense and we need to recalculate the mileage from one point to another to transfer the treasures. And they say, oh, thank you for your correction. So I was really happy to return the team a little back. Basically, I spoke like three or four times per all of the conversation because the guy, the captain of Malaysian Airlines was too much active. He was speaking, speaking, speaking. He was taking and grabbing the cards from everyone. He was looking at the, okay, you have this information, this information, we don't need, this is not useful. He was really like the leader of our team and I was the checker. On the other side of the table, there was the human resource manager and the instructor from the simulator we were flying a couple of days ago. Later on, the timing stopped and we haven't solved this question. We haven't solved this task but the idea is not to solve the task the idea is to behave in a group honestly it was kind of uncomfortable because the human resource manager instructor they were writing notes at the same time you were speaking and he was wondering what kind of the notes they were writing and he was a little scared about it <laughs> after it there was the personal interview with psychologist she asked many of the questions based on your previously conducted psychometric tests. I was asked the question of why I answered positively that stress affects my job. And I answered that definitely we need some amount of stress to active normally, but if the stress is too much, we can go to the terrible state of overstressed condition. And it is also normally, so we need to control our stress with the rest and other stuff. So I answered like that. My profile was not perfect, I mean the psychometric test. Nevertheless, at the same day I was invited for one more interview, again with instructor and human resource manager. There on the interview you need to speak about the cases that happened in your flight career. For example, I had hydroplaning, I had a couple of the go-rounds because of the bad weather and I spoke about those cases, obviously in English everything. And they are not just listening to you, they ask you more and more questions, especially the instructor because he knows the topic, he used to fly and he is able to catch you at any moment. So the story you are talking about should be real, happen to you. If nothing special happened, just speak about something interesting that happened in your flight career. After that personal interview, I went to hotel and I got the call immediately saying that I have passed this day and I need to go right away for the eye test. The medical facility is located not far away from the headquarters, but still you need to cover some distance. We went there with a small group of the pilots who made it through all of the interview steps and believe me, 90% didn't make it. Even the Canadian guy who was typewriter on 737 who was flying with Canadian instructor didn't pass the simulator. Wow. About the eye check, you are allowed to wear glasses, no problems with that. They check many of the parameters and they found that I have too much pressure with one instrument and they sent me to extra analysis using the special color fluid on the eye and they pushed me with some of the pressure stuff and honestly I nearly fainted there because it was so uncomfortable that someone is patching into your eye with something. Oh my god. <laughs> but I passed it with extra check, they say everything is normal happily luckily on the day number four there was one thing the medical check it is quite easy my friends they check the heart they check the audiometry so your hearing they check your pressure the blood test urine and that's it very simple even compared to the eye test after all of those checks done, you have the special interview with the doctor. He asks you about your history of your sickness, if you have those. So I passed everything successfully and flown back to Jakarta. Again, business class Boeing 777. By the way, we even did the go round in Jakarta because the runway was blocked over there. Ooh. I was so happy that I passed all of those steps and later on I even received the email from the medical facility saying that I I have passed everything for my medical certificate, it will be ready, blah blah blah. So I was really mentally in Emirates. But in one more week I received one more mail from Emirates saying that 
they didn't choose me they select the best of the best so in my pool i was probably not the best one they say that they give me one year to reapply for the position of the first officer of boeing 777 usually they give two years but in my case i have the exclusion then i received the news uh, there was no one around me my family was in ukraine and i was going to fly my next flight on etr the same day and definitely i was sad and in depression but after a while like after three days everything turned fine for me because after all i still have the chance to apply for emirates but there's the question whether i need to work there because um, there you feel like a tiny little piece in this huge mechanism of emirates it is a huge airline and i wouldn't say that it is for everyone especially speaking from the climate's perspective for me it's better to stay in europe in a european nice climate to experience winter time summer time snow hot it's good but there i would feel uncomfortable working working and working because at some point people are working hard in emirates as hard as it could be within the rules window but i think it's the topic of our other video my friends hopefully you enjoyed this video i was sharing my experience in interview with emirates hope you'll have some tips if you are going there or if you want to fly with emirates and you are interested into behind the curtains situation over there I'm really grateful for Emirates for the opportunity to pass the interview. Actually, I passed it, but I wasn't the best of the best at that particular moment. Maybe one day we're gonna fly in Emirates and I might be the pilot over there. Who knows? Life is interesting and unpredictable. My friends, I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.